So in the last video we looked at distance time graphs. In this video we're going to look at velocity time graphs, which is a different kind of motion graph, and it shows how the velocity of an object evolves over time. Um, we'll do the same thing as we did in the last video. We'll first look at what we can tell by just looking at the graphs and looking at the shape of the, the graphs, and then we'll make some calculations as well. So let's start then with this graph here. What does this graph here show us about this, this object and the motion of this object? Well, what's happening? So as time goes on, the velocity, you can see, is clearly increasing. Okay. So if time goes on and, velo and velocity is increasing, then that must mean that it's getting faster. Okay. It's accelerating. And it's accelerating at a constant rate. So this is constant, constant acceleration. Okay. Right. In this second graph, okay, you can see that it's very similar. As Again, as time goes on, velocity goes up. Yeah, so it's still it's still accelerating. It's constant acceleration, except this time velocity isn't going up by quite as much. So this is a slower, a lower constant acceleration. Okay, so a lower constant acceleration. In this graph, as time goes on, velocity does not change. Yeah, so velocity isn't changing as time goes on. Um, this would indicate then that it's moving at a constant velocity. Okay, this is what's going to confuse a lot of people, I would imagine. In, in the last video, we looked at a distance time graph, whereas a flat line on a distance time graph, it's on a distance time graph, a flat line indicates that the distance is not increasing as time goes on. Therefore, it's 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 um it's stationary. But in this graph, this doesn't in, the, the y-axis doesn't in, have um it's not distance, it's velocity this time. Therefore, the velocity isn't changing. The velocity is not at zero. Um, it's got some value, so it must be moving, and it's just not changing its velocity, so it's a constant velocity. But in this graph, as time goes on, velocity is going down, okay? So if velocity is going down as time goes on, then it must be decelerating. So this is constant deceleration. Finally then, let's look at this last one. So this time, as time goes on, velocity is not changing again, so it's still moving at a constant velocity. However, Notice that the velocity is zero. Okay, so in this case, it is stationary. Right. Let's have a look at a uh, let's have a look at a, a velocity time graph then with um, some actual values on it. Now, this one here, it's got four distinct sections. Yeah, you can see section A. You can see it's got constant acceleration. It's a straight line going up. This one here, this one here is a constant velocity. Section B constant velocity and then section c again this is a constant acceleration however it's it's slightly slower than section a uh, slightly lower than section a i should say and then section d it's going down so it's decelerating okay right so in the last video we calculated the gradient of each section and the gradient on a distance time graph the gradient gives you uh, the the velocity however on a velocity time graph the the gradient the gradient actually doesn't give you velocity anymore. It, it now gives you uh, acceleration, and we'll see why in a minute. Okay, so let's make let's make some gradient calculations. So remember the equation for velocity. The equation for sorry, the equation for acceleration. The equation for acceleration is change in velocity divided by time. So let's do that for section A. What's the change in velocity for section A? Well, it started at zero. And section A has gone all the way up to 8. So the change in velocity is going to be from 0 to 8. That's 8. Okay. Now, so we've got the change in velocity bit. Now the time. So how long has that taken? Well, it started at 0 seconds and it's gone to 4 seconds. Okay. So it's going to be 8 divided by 4 seconds. That's going to give us our acceleration. 8 divided by 4 will give you 2. Okay. So it'll give you 2 meters per second squared. Okay. Section B, you can clearly see that that is not accelerating. So it's zero meters per second squared. However, it is moving at eight meters per second. It's just not getting faster. Section C. Right. So section C then, what's the change in velocity? Well, it started at eight meters per second. It's accelerated to 12 meters per second. Therefore, it's change in velocity from eight to 12 is four meters per second. How long has it taken to accelerate 
by uh, increase its velocity by four meters per second. Well, it started accelerating at eight seconds, and it finished accelerating at 12 seconds. Therefore, it's taken four seconds for it to do that. Four divided by four will give you one meter per second squared. Okay, I'm just going to get rid of that calculation so that we can do the final, the final one. Uh, so D, section D, what's happening? It's decelerating. So change in velocity then. So it started, again it started at 12, and this time it's finished at 0. If it started at 12 and it's finished at 0, then it's changed its velocity by minus 12, okay, because it's gone down. So it's changed its velocity by minus 12. And to do that, well, it started decelerating at 12 meters per uh, 12 seconds, and it finished at 18. So it's taken six seconds to make that change. Minus 12 divided by six is minus two meters per second squared. Okay. So that minus sign, what's the significance of the minus sign? It means it's decelerating. Okay. Um, so it's decelerating by two meters per second every second. Right. Let's talk about another thing we can work out from the graph then. Okay, so another thing we can work out from the graph then is the area underneath the graph. Okay, what do I mean by the area underneath the graph? Well, if I shade this region in, this region underneath the graph here, the orange region, that is going to give us the distance travelled by our object. Okay, why is it going to give us the distance traveled? Well, if you calculate an area, you're essentially multiplying two side lengths together. So one of the side lengths is going to be from read from the y axis, which is our velocity axis, and the other side length will be measured from our x axis, which is our time axis. So if we take velocity and times it by time, you get distance. Okay, so let's work out the distance then. So how do I do that? How do I work out the area under the graph? Well, the easiest way to do it would be to separate your graph into sections. So let's separate this into shapes then. Firstly, we've got this triangle here. Okay, we can work out the area of that. I'm going to put, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to separate a triangle out up here as well, and then a square here. Okay, so we've got a square, triangle, another triangle. We can use those, we can work out the area. Working out the area of those and adding them together will give us the uh, will, will give us the distance travelled by this object over this amount of time. So, if you think you can do it, if you can think, if you think you can work out the area of those, then go ahead, pause the video, work it out, and unpause it, and I will walk through it uh, with you as well. Okay, let's start with uh, let's start with the first triangle. Okay, um, so how far? So what what are we doing to find the area of a triangle? Remember, the area of a triangle is just half base times the height. Okay. Now, the half. So the base is it goes from zero to four. So the base is four, which means half of that is two. Okay. So it's two times by the height of the triangle, which is zero to eight. So two times by eight is going to give you sixteen. Okay. So this is going to have an area of sixteen. And it's going to be 16 meters, okay, because we're taking meters per second and we're multiplying it by seconds. So meters per second times by seconds, it gives us meters, distance, yeah. Area of this square, the base times the height. So the base, it goes from 4 to 12, okay, so the base is 8. The height is also 8. 8 times 8 is 64 meters, okay. This triangle, okay, so the base here starts at 8, goes up to 12, so the base is 4. Half of the base is 2, and then the height is going to be 4 as well because it goes from 8 to 12. Okay, so 2 times 4 will give us 8 meters. Okay, right, so let's work out the, the area of the final triangle. The base goes from 12 to 18, which is going to be 6. Half of that is 3. The height it goes from 0 to 12. Okay. So 3 times by 12 is going to give you 36 meters. Okay, so let's add them all together then to get a total distance. We got 16 plus 64 plus 8 plus 36. That's going to give you 124 meters total. Okay, right. Um,
I will see you in the next video.